Hey guys, Brad with Tin Soldier Race Cars. We're back for another tech video. Tonight we're gonna to be talking all about setting up a four link. We're gonna talk about a traditional four link, which this car has in it. We're gonna talk about stock suspension and the differences between the two, but they basically, they set up really similar. So we're gonna talk about how to square the rear end housing up, how to plot it out and all of that. When I'm setting up a car in-house, if you bring it here, which we do offer a setup and scale service, when you bring it here, this is kind of the order of operations that I go through. So the first thing you wanna do, you wanna roughly square the rear end housing up in, a, in the car. So imagine you just stuck this thing in here, you, you haven't done anything with it. The first thing you wanna do is get the rear end housing centered up in the wheel well, front to back. If, you know, if you stick the tire in here, you should have the same similar gap front as you do in the back. So you're gonna roughly square this thing up. You don't even need a tape measure at this point. You're just gonna roughly adjust the bars by hand really quickly, adjust the pinion angle to where the drive shaft and the yoke are roughly in line. You just wanna get it in the ballpark. Same thing, you know, adjusting the rear end side to side, get the thing in the ballpark so that we can go ahead and set ride height. Here, I have a shock here. When we set the ride height, the adjuster on the spring is not to use to set the actual ride height of the car. The adjuster for the spring is to set the, the shock installed height. So what I mean by that is that if you have a radial tire car and you know the car is going to separate a bunch, well, you don't want to install it with this much of the shock shaft showing because you're going to top the shock out immediately. So what we want to do is we want to install the shock in the car down here where we only have maybe an inch of shaft show, an inch and a half, um, so that that way when we let off the trans brake button and the car's under power, it's going to separate while we have you know, four or five inches of shock shaft so that if we want to separate the car three or four inches, we have enough shock to do that. If you're already set up in the middle or in the top half, then you're not going to have enough shock to even be able to extend that far. On the other side of the spectrum, if you're a, you know, if this is a big tire slick car and it's going to squat um, when we leave the starting line, well, you might set it up. I would probably set it up about in the middle of the shock travel. But if, you know, if your car squats really, really hard, you might have to be on the other end of the spectrum where the shock is most of the way extended at ride height. And then that way, when it gets on the wheelie bar and, it sh and the shock compresses, that you don't bottom the shock out. So it really depends on what you're setting the car up for. But for the most part, if it's a small tire car, you're gonna set the shock up to where it's installed in the car at ride height, you know, pretty compressed. And if it's a big tire car, you're gonna be somewhere in the middle of the shock travel, most likely as your installed height. And then once you have your installed height set with the weight of the car sitting on it, we're gonna adjust the ride height up and down with your coilover bracket. So our four link brackets and most four link brackets nowadays have all these holes on the back of them where you can adjust the shock mount up and down to change the ride height. So that's how we're gonna change the ride height. You can do the same thing on a stock suspension car that has coilover brackets. You're gonna change the ride height here. Once you have your shock installed height set, you don't wanna change that. You wanna change the ride height here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna start squaring the rear end housing up in the car with a tape measure. The easiest way to do this is to literally take a tape measure and measure from the front bracket to the rear bracket you can see this is 17 and three quarter from the front bracket to the rear bracket. So then we're gonna to go to the other side and measure from the front bracket to the rear bracket. We're gonna make that side also 17 and three quarter. So you're gonna go back and forth. It might take you a couple times going back and forth until you get them the same right to left. And then the rear end housing is pretty square in the car. After we do that, we're gonna set the pinion angle in order to set the pinion angle, you're gonna need some sort of angle finder. You can use a, an old school analog gauge with a needle, but the digital gauges with the 
the light up back screen are really sweet. You can get these things on Amazon for like 20 bucks. They work really good, especially because you're up underneath the car and it's dark. So they got a backlit screen, but the way you're going to set pinion angle, the easiest way is to go to the face of the housing and measure the angle that the housing is sitting at. So you can see this housing is sitting 1.5 degrees downhill. So it's going downhill 1.5 degrees. Then we're going to go to the drive shaft and you can see it's going uphill about 0.5 degrees. So you take the two angles between the drive shaft and the rear end housing, you know, the yoke on the rear end is square with the housing faceplate. So we can measure either, either way, but you're going to take the angle of the rear end housing to the angle of the drive shaft and you're going to add the two together. So this one's an, a one and a half degrees downhill. This one is a degree uphill. That gives us two degrees of pinion angle. So you're normally always going to be somewhere between one and two degrees negative pinion angle. The only exception would be like a leaf spring car. You have to run a little bit more pinion angle just because the leaf springs flex a whole lot more. But normally on any four link car, you're going to be somewhere between one and two degrees negative pinion angle. And it's a good idea to check that at ride height and then also to check that with the rear end fully extended. So you wanna to try to keep that negative pinion angle all the way through the rear end travel. Obviously that's not always possible, but you know you might have to be at negative two at ride height and maybe it's negative one degree fully extended or vice versa. But you just wanna to try to keep the pinion negative all the way through the travel. That does two things, it helps keep you know, the rear end loaded and driving and also accounts for any slop and anything that if there's slop in any of the joints or bolts or anything that once that slop is removed, that the drive shaft and the U joint is pretty straight. You know, the U joint is the strongest when it's straight and it also has the least amount of drag. So we're accounting, you know, one or two degrees in there for slop or movement and anything. So yeah, you always wanna be on the negative side. The last thing you wanna do is you want to square the rear end up side to side. So on a traditional four link car, you're either gonna have a wishbone or you're gonna have a diagonal link. We run a wishbone on all of our cars um, with a slider link, but a diagonal link also works. You see a lot of older bracket cars with diagonal links and they work fine. A stock suspension car doesn't have a wishbone or a diagonal link. The way a stock suspension car locates the rear end side to side is with the upper control arms. So like a Mustang or a G or A body has a triangulated upper four link and the triangulation in the uppers is actually what controls, which keeps the rear end moving side to side. So in order to move the rear end side to side in the car with the wishbone, we're going to lengthen or shorten the, the rod ends on the end of the wishbone. On the diagonal link, which would go from one of the front brackets to one of the rear brackets, you're gonna lengthen or shorten the diagonal link to move the rear end side to side. On a stock suspension car, you are gonna either lengthen or shorten the upper control arms to move the rear end side to side. To get the rear end square in the car, I like to measure from the frame rail, the inner frame rail, out to the axle mounting flange or to the wheel on both sides. And then I like to also measure to the quarter panels. The reason I do this is because one, not all cars, the quarter panels are even on, you know, f from factory, you can get one quarter panel is installed a little bit different than another, the other side. The other thing you can have is if the chassis isn't installed perfectly square in the car, you know, you could have one wheel opening that's say 16 inches wide and the other side's 15 inches wide. So sometimes you got to split the difference a little bit, to, especially if the tire is a relatively tight fit in the wheel well. Sometimes you might have to cheat the rear end one way or another, just de depending on the car. You know, in a perfect world, the chassis should be perfectly square in the car and, you know, everything's symmetrical, but it's not always that way. So, you know, if you have an older car, you know, or a home built car and it's, you know, it's not perfectly square, that's okay. Just get it to where it fits best. You know, get the rear end side to side and the tire front to back where it fits best in there. 
and just get it squared up as good as you can. Once you get it squared side to side, the pinion angle set, and it's squared front to back on both sides with a tape measure, then you're ready to plot it. So when you plot the four link out, you need to get the car down at ride height, but you also need to be able to get underneath of it to measure where the four link is installed in the brackets. So you're gonna be measuring to the center of all your four link bolts. So in order to do that, you need to have the car a little bit up off the ground so that you can get underneath of it, uh, especially you know if it's a low car, most drag cars are low. So what I like to use is uh, we have these race ramp foam blocks. These things are awesome. You can set the car right on it and it gets the car up. They make these in different heights. These are the 10 inch tall version, but you can set the car on all four of these and that gets the car 10 inches up with the up off the ground but still has the car sitting at ride height so then now you can slide underneath the car on a creeper and you can start taking measurements so all your measurements are going to be from the ground up to the center of your four link bolt you're going to measure all four and then you're also going to measure the distance forward of axle center line so you're going to measure from axle center line forward to all four bolts and you're going to record those measurements so this is the way that I kind of slide underneath of there and I'll kind of jot it down real quick. You can see this is the center of the axle tube. These are all my available holes in the four link brackets and then I'll fill in which holes that I'm actually currently in and then jot down all your measurements on there. And then you can take these measurements and go plug them into a four link calculator. So there are some free four link calculators out there. Baseline suspensions is probably the easiest, quickest to use free calculator. It'll get you in the ballpark, but obviously the, the more expensive four link calculators definitely do more, they're gonna be more accurate. Like I said, the baseline suspensions one will get you in the ballpark, but the one that I prefer to use is the performance trends. It has a lot of bells and whistles and features that some of the other ones don't have, and it works really well. But you're gonna go into your four link calculator and you're gonna plug in your dimensions, so your height and your distance forward for all your four link points, and then it's gonna, you're gonna plug in the wheelbase of the car, the rough weight of the car, and your center of gravity of the car, which is normally calculated off camshaft height or crankshaft height plus five inches that'll get you about in the ballpark of your center of gravity and then it'll give you it'll tell you what your instant center and your anti-squat is going to be i talk about that a lot in our other four link video so if you haven't checked that out yet make sure you go over there and check that one out it's also on youtube so normally on a small tire car you're going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 25 to 40 inches in length and eight or nine inches high and you're going to be separating it so you're going to be somewhere 120 to 200 percent anti-squat whereas on a big tire car you know, a big tire slick car that is going to be squatting you know you'll probably be somewhere between 50 and 70 inches in length and you're going to be you know 50 to 100 percent anti-squat so the you know which is going to make the car squat so once you figure out what's gonna work best for your car. Then you'll come back, move the bars to where you've come up with in your four link calculator, and then we're ready to go. After you've plotted this thing out and you've made your final bar adjustments uh, and you have them set in the holes that you want them in, then you wanna come back and you wanna recheck the squareness of the rear end and the, especially the pinion angle because a lot of times when you make a bar adjustment, the pinion angle will change a little bit or you'll have to lengthen or shorten the bars to get the bolts to line up. So you wanna come back and recheck pinion angle and then you wanna final square the rear end up. So at this point, you can square it up with a tape measure, but I like to go one step farther than that. So most cars, if they weren't professionally built on a chassis table in a really nice jig, the four link brackets are probably not perfectly square in the car. And again, that's okay. That's why these things have adjustment. In order to check that, we need some way to measure to see if the rear end is truly square in the car, not just measuring back off the four link brackets. So the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna find center of the front of the car and we're gonna drop a plumb bob in the front. 
then we're going to come back and we're going to drop a plumb bob off of each rear axle. You can drop it off the nine inch end, off of the rotor hat, anything back here that's square. You don't want to drop it off the axle tube because sometimes the nine inch ends aren't perfectly square on the axle tube. But anything from the nine inch end or your house, your whatever housing end you have out is okay to drop a plumb bob off. You just wanna make sure it's the same on both sides. I really like to use the axle uh, just because it's the farthest point out. So it's gonna give you the best measurement and you know that it's nice and square to the wheel. So what you wanna do is drop a plumb bob off of here. And then we're gonna take a tape measure uh, you might need a buddy to help you. I have a, a weight with a screw in it to hold my tape measure for me set up. That's a little uh, setup hack for you. But uh, if you don't have that, just grab you a buddy and have him hold the tape measure in the front. And you want to measure back to your plumb bob on your left side and then measure back to your plumb bob on the right side. So what this will do is you'll triangulate your measurements back from the center of the front of the car back to each side of the rear end housing. Now you want to make these match. So, you know, if you have 150 inches on that side and 150 inches on this side, then the rear end square, you know, obviously if they're different, then you'll need to lengthen or shorten the bars in order to get the rear end square in the car. So on a traditional four link car, you're going to lengthen both upper and lower bars at the same time to push this side back or shorten both of these bars to move this side forward. On a stock suspension car that has triangulated uppers, you're gonna leave the uppers alone because those square the rear end side to side and you're only gonna move the lower bars. So the lower bar will square the rear end in the car front to back. The upper bars square the rear end side to side only on a stock suspension car. So you're going to move the rear end forward and backwards until your measurements triangulated back from the front on both sides are the same. Now you know that the rear end housing is perfectly square in the car. You're also now going to know if your four link brackets are installed square in the car. Okay, so now that you've squared the rear, final squared the rear end up in the car, you're ready to put the car on scales, if you have scales, and set the preload in the four link and the anti-roll bar. So if you have scales, now's the time to do it. Get the car on, set down on the scales, make sure you zero it before you set it down on the scales. You wanna put the driver in there and look at your corner weights. At this point, you're gonna decide if you wanna make any weight changes. So if you want more weight in the rear, more weight on the front, anything like that, this is the time that you wanna do that. So add weight, if you need to add weight accordingly, and then after you add weight, you're gonna need to adjust your ride height back up. So now you're gonna adjust your ride height back up to where it was with the spring adjuster. So when you add weight to the car, it's gonna compress the shock more. So now at ride height, instead of being here, you're gonna be here. So we're gonna adjust the spring back up to get the shock installed height back to where we originally set it at with the added weight in the car. So make sure you note the ride height and the shock installed height before you add the weight to the car. Um, front to rear weight really depends on what kind of track you're racing on and what kind of uh, power adder you have, what kind of tire you're running on. You know, there's a lot of variables there. Obviously, if you're running a backwards track no prep, you're gonna have a ton of weight in the back. If you're a small block nitrous car running on radial prep, you're gonna have a lot of most of your weight in the front. So, you know, it's, it really all depends on what kind of car that you're racing. As far as side to side weight in the rear, you always want the driver left, you want the left rear tire, the driver's side, to have a little bit more weight than the right side. So the reason that you want that is because the car always, when you leave the starting line, let off the trains brake button, launch, whatever, it always rocks to the back right tire. It's trying to roll the car. So when it launches, launches, it's already applying more weight to the back right tire. 
So we're going to offset some of that by adding a little bit more weight to the back left than the back right. Most cars, you don't have to add any ballast to achieve this because the driver is already sitting on that side. So most cars are already heavy on the back left tire. The faster the car, the more weight needs to be on the back left tire to keep the car from driving left because the more horsepower, the harder the car is going to drive left. So the way that we achieve that is either by adding weight on that side or by putting preload in the four link or the anti-roll bar. So normally I try to get it in the ballpark with weight before we do any preload and then we're going to come in here and the last thing that we're going to do is set the preload. So on a traditional four link car you're going to set all your preload with this top right bar here. On a stock suspension car you cannot preload the four link. If it's got triangulated uppers, there you cannot preload the four link. You can only preload the four link on a parallel four link. So, what, this is what I mean by preload. You can actually lengthen or shorten this top right bar and it will actually cock the rear end right to left. So when you do that, it'll actually apply weight. If you have it sitting on the scales, you can watch it when you move this bar put more weight on the back left tire or the back right tire. So they call positive preload would be shortening this upper bar, which will put more weight on the back right tire. This will generally make the car drive to the left, but it will also help keep the front left tire on the ground if the car is twisting up real bad. Negative preload is when you lengthen the top right bar. This will apply more weight to the back left tire. So the faster the car is, the more negative preload you're gonna have to put in it to shift that weight to the back left to offset the car naturally rolling over onto the back right. So the more horsepower the car makes, the more negative preload you're gonna have to put in it to get the car to drive straight off the starting line. The other way to set preload in the car is with the anti-roll bar. On a four-link car, I like to do all my preload with the four-link, and then I neutral the anti-roll bar out. So what I mean by neutral is the bar literally is floppy back and forth. So it's so loose in there that you could literally, if there wasn't nuts on these bolts, you could literally slide that bolt in and out. There is no load on this bar. It's neutral. The anti-roll bar is the same way you can feel when there's no load on it and it's literally sloppy back and forth. The rod ends have slop in them. So set your preload with your top right four link bar and then neutral the anti-roll bar out. On a stock suspension car, since you can't preload the four link, you're gonna do all your preload with the anti-roll bar. So if the car's driving right or left, you can lengthen the the anti-roll bar arm to put more weight on this tire or shorten the right anti-roll bar link to put weight on the back left tire. So you can do it a little, it's not as effective, but the anti-roll bar um, does work moving preload back and forth. So now that you've set your preload and the car's on scales, it's ready to go at this point, you know, tight, make sure everything's tight, bolt check everything and you're ready to go down the racetrack. If you haven't checked out our other four link video, make sure to go check that out where we talk about different variations in four link and how they act going down the racetrack, um, as well as the different four link brackets we sell. As you can see on this car, if you can see in here, it has our uh, traditional four link brackets with our conversion brackets on here, which shortens the upper. So this is a really cool setup, uh, allows you to go back and forth between our shorter upper bar and a uh, traditional four link with a long upper bar. So this is a really good versatile setup. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You're not locked into just one setup. This is all available on our website along with this rear end housing here. If you haven't, go ahead and like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Thanks guys.